back to Irish Football Fan TV. Today we are with Alex and Lawrence from Eat Sleep Footy Repeat, which is a Welsh fan show. How are you doing, guys? Yeah, thank you. Good, thank you. Yeah, really yeah. good, Paul. Really good. How are you? Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, why aren't you here? That's what. I, that's the very first thing I want to know, right? <laughs> why aren't you here? Recently left my job and uh, couldn't re afford it, so I've been offered two tickets, three hundred euro return, because I went over uh, Sunday tonight. Uh, I'm back uh, tomorrow after the game. Couldn't afford it, unfortunately, but that's the way things happen, isn't it? You, you can still make it. Right? There's a boat, and I've got a garage and a shed you can dip in. You know, I, I do it. You, you, you want to bring yourself up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just think, you know, I just think, why, why should he miss out on this? Why yeah. should it? This, would, this is going to be cracking. Wouldn't have got a ticket, but I do know a lot of people that are over there, and the atmosphere uh, is going to be electric, I'm sure. Uh, just like it was when you guys came over here, because, uh, as I said, I was in Hangar. Uh, I couldn't get a ticket for that game either. But um, I was in Hangar, and there was a swarm of you, and I was the only Irish person there with my Ireland jersey on. And um, it was you shame. couldn't get tickets for that game. No, I was just I was well, literally fresh, fresh, well, fresh back from uh, Canada. I was over there coaching. So seats there for Ireland fans. So do you remember that? There were, like, there were like six for Welsh fans, <laughs> and, then and then the rest of it was just Irish fans. Do you remember that? I, I saw a lot of seats for Ireland at the Aviva when we came to visit you. Yeah, it seems like he's got your own back there with us this time around. <laughs> well, you know, comes around, comes around. There's, um, there's been a bit of controversy, right? There's, we've seen a few things from the press asking why it's not in the uh, Millennium Stadium and things like that. Yeah, no, there was a, there was a lot of fans wondering why that was the case. Oh, that's that's a really one. That's a really simple one to answer because yeah. if we went to the Principality Stadium, as it now is, yeah, it's true. The atmosphere would be like a font in space. It really because it's like it's seventy four thousand, and with the best will in the world. We're not, you know, it, I've, I've, yeah. been to, I've been to football internationals there and it's just, it's woeful. It it's really kind of is. like, and also the Cardiff City Stadium now, the players feel like it's their stadium, it's their home. So yeah. they're very keen to there's stay a, there. And There's a spiritual yeah. thing going on there, I isn't think there? So, yeah. there? Very much so, yeah, yeah. with the Canton stand and all the singing in there. There's sort of, you know, you, you know when it feels like home and that's what it feels like. It just happens to be a little bit smaller than other places. And that's basically it. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I've no doubt that, uh, I don't think there's going to be many, like, fights written over there. I do see the Welsh and the Irish pr do pretty much get along. Like, there was a lot of using Temple Bar, there was no trouble there when I was there. Uh, I was all singing, dancing, and uh, it's a good time, you know. Definitely. It's, uh, the Wales fans, when we go away, it's, the, it's, a, it's a real positive vibe, you know. We just got back from Georgia, it was partying in the street, but it was that, you know, you know a good travelling fan, you know. Yeah. We're not supposed to throw plastic chairs around. No, we're, no, not, we're, we're not those kind of people. Although, we have got a couple of bones of contention. <laughs> Just a couple do of we? bones of contention. Yes, we do. Yeah, okay. we do. Well, I do, personally, okay, from, from the last trip to where okay. we were there. Okay, release. release. So, there was, I, I feel like it's an ideal opportunity. Yeah. So, there, one, there was the ticket allocation where, let's be honest, we were stiffed. Was it 1,500 and a... Uh, 3,000 and 50,000. 50,000 stadium. You know, the gentleman's agreement between international federations is at 10%. It's not down to, you know, how big your stadium is. It's, it's what you can... Okay, okay. okay. And, so, and your next one? The next one was you banned the house band, the Barry Horns, under the, under the auspices of local planning regulations... And then and local noise regulations, I believe it yeah, was, yeah, yeah. and then piped horrendous band music through the uh, through the PA system at top top volume all the way. It's just it's you know, loud, it's it was loud. loud. It was loud. It was loud. You know, we just thought <laughs> we just left the Aviva thinking, Do you know, that's that's a bit, bit, it's a bit childish. <laughs> childish is what we go. Well, so that's what we went away thinking. We we left there with you know, because up to that point. Absolutely brilliant, and I didn't even mind paying the hilarious prices in Temple Bar because you're a tourist. That's what tourists do. You go to Temple Bar. If somebody mentioned Grafton Street beforehand, oh no, yeah, See? flags down. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> okay, okay, you have to now stop talking because the flags are yeah, falling. Oh, I'll sort this out. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but you know, I'm not holding you personally responsible, Paul. It's not you know, I'm leaving it all at your door. But you know, we just just that little thing, just that little rub, and you just think, well. There's no real need for that. I'll, ha I'll, have, I'll, have, I'll have a word with the, the FAI uh, CEO there. I met him a couple of weeks ago, John Delaney, so I'll have a word with him. I'll send him an email for you, all right? Is that fair enough? Thanks very much. I'm sure, I'm sure he'll be very, very pleased to be a problem. He really will. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure, yeah. Uh, so what is the vibe? What is the vibe over there with you guys? How, it's, uh, how are you feeling? Um, I don't know. Like, we, we, Obviously, we, for us, 
having bail out is a positive. But I mean, we've had our best player out for since obviously Neil Taylor took him out. So we've had our best player uh, out for a long period. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, 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 we're quietly kind of confident. I mean, I, I don't see why we shouldn't be going to Wales um, trying to get a result. I mean, we've beaten we've beaten better teams. No offense or that, but we we've we've beaten Germany and we've beaten Bosnia and the likes. Um, you know, we've beaten them with with our full strength team, so I, I don't see why we should be going there fearing playing you guys. Not that you guys are a bad team, but I think without Bale out and Coleman out, the co- odds are fairly even now, I believe. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, interesting. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in um I think the the, the feeling amongst the Wales players is that they've started here for a bit of momentum now. Yeah. You know, three straight wins, not conceded a goal. It feels like that team from the Euros has returned. You know, they had a sort of bit of a sticky start, but yeah, it's, it feels good from our end. So I think he sets it up really nicely. I think what, what came out of the Austria game, we, we talked about this after after the fact, didn't we? And because um, I mean, the, the the Austria game, the first half of the Austria game was one of the worst halves of football. From we, we've actually, it was yeah, just it was horrendous. Yeah. We thought we were looking at it going. We're going to get stuck any minute now. It's all going to go horribly wrong. Uh, and then, in the second half, he had a little bit of a shuffle. He changed to a back four. And then, yeah. Ben Woodburn, obviously, Ben Woodburn came on and then just, you know... Did his thing. Did his thing. But what it showed to us... Was there, was a, things. there was a plan B, yeah. which previously we didn't feel that we had. And so you looked at the bench before and it just wasn't... There wasn't a, uh, you know, an obvious player that you'd look at and you'd throw on and he would change the game immediately. So when we came from away from Austria, it was like, there is an alternative. We can do something. We can just, you know, not just like, because Oshan Roberts is the technical director yeah. and the assistant manager and Chris Coleman. I mean, big, big footballing brains. And they all like move a player six yards to the right or, you know, that sort of uh, thing. And they'll say, right, don't, just, did you just drift or this, then, you know, all sort of little tinkering all the time. But, Nothing that you would go right, and now this is completely different. This is a different yeah. approach from the team. And against Austria, we felt that we had that. Yeah. Um, Moldova was a, that was another horrible game as well. Um, Just horrible from being in the state. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was. It, it, yeah. It was okay. Um, it was an okay performance. But you know that that's that's what a lot of what we flag talked down, about. Lads. Flag fell down. Flag fell down. Just leave it. You can see the one behind you anyway. There anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, so we were really in Um We won't take it as an omen. Um, no, no. But so, so our couple of uh, wild cards, obviously Ben Woodburn's just leapt into it. But I'm a Bristol City fan, you see, uh, and you've got Callum O'Dyda, and I'm a little bit worried that Callum O'Dyda is going to suddenly explode onto the international scene against really? us. Really? Yeah. He's such well, he got he got he got a start there the other night, which uh, not a lot of people were expecting, and O'Neill. He does love a wild card, like a lot, a lot of his team selections. Like we all would predict a lineup that we think be, you know, fairly reasonable, and he'll come out with the like the wildest thing. And now Odell, Odell are coming in. I don't know if you watched, but um, there's a lad there called Sean McGuire got put into the squad playing for Preston. Right. Uh, he was banging them in. You never heard him. I've heard of him. Yeah, he's a good player. He's he was banging them in in the League of Ireland over here. And then he got picked up by Preston and everyone was calling for him to be put in the squad and he was banging him in the League of Ireland. As soon as he makes that magical flight over to uh, England, he's in the squad in the squad straight away. He came on now the other night. Uh, he only got a couple of minutes and all the fans were, were screaming for him to come on after 60 minutes. Or Scott Hogan as well, is playing for Villa and he's playing for Brentford. So there is that as well. Like The Irish fans do want the players to come in because Shane Long's not scoring goals. Um, he, although he'll do the hard work. Sorry? It's a long run for Shane. It's a long run for Shane Long, isn't it? I think. Where yeah. It's not what, nine. I mean, he's a good. You look a little bit like him, actually. Thank you very much. <laughs> I love Shane. I, I actually go. I don't think Shane. there's anyone that doesn't actually like him, but they just wish he'd score. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? The Irish fans do love him, but they just wish he'd get a goal. Well, it's a little bit like Hal Robson Cano, but apart from the fact he does score now and again, everybody yeah, likes Hal Robson Cano. Yeah. Rockstar. It's a rock star enters in everything. He's like one of those players that everyone just absolutely loves or, or, or Johnny Esther Johnny Williams yeah, yeah. who doesn't play he just yeah. you know, great he's, he's on the, he's on the uh, but he's got a great song over. he's one of those players but yeah I can, I can see I can yeah. see at the same yeah. well, I, do, I do I do think I do think that Murphy will start it's just a matter of picking his um, his strike pattern but I don't see him not picking long but to be honest with you it's written in the stars now for long to, to get his goal and for it to be or else Maguire and I mean, it'd be a bit of a fairy tale if Maguire did, because he went over originally to West Ham, failed, went back to the League of Ireland, did it all again, and now he's back over. 
And he's, 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 doing, he's, he's getting man of the match performances for Preston week in, week out. I know it's a championship, but he's still making differences even though he's not scoring, you know. So if he's not scoring, he's assisting or he's getting man of the match performances, you know. Shane Long, he's playing, starting for Southampton, but he's not, he's not doing it. He's not affecting games. So we kind of need someone to grab the ball by the horns. We, I, to be honest with you, I think Robbie Brady would be our main threat. Yeah, no, he's a quality player. Really quality player. Really left foot. Yeah, I was going to say, what, um, what, what sort of game do you think it's going to be? Because the one, in, the one in Ireland was it was quite a um, uh, it was quite a tense affair. It was very tight, very nip tuck. Um, you know, there weren't that many chances here or there. Do you, I don't... Are, you, are you imagining something very similar uh, here, um, or do you imagine that uh, Ireland will think, hang on a minute, we, no, we need to win this, so therefore they're going to they're going to throw stuff forward. To be honest with you, I think that it depends. It will depend on what type of midfield he goes for. If he sticks Hulahan, um no, if he goes with Harry Arthur, maybe James McCarthy and Jeff Henrik, I think then we can get the ball down and actually play. Because if we don't and we start sending long balls up to the likes of Ashley Williams, that's his bread and butter, do you know what I mean? Uh, we need, we need, we need. If we want to win, I believe that we need to be stretching you guys. But at the same time, like I don't see us stretching you guys out wide because you love Ben Davis, who's, you know, he's he's going very well at the moment now for Spurs. Uh, I was only over it a couple of weeks ago uh, for Everton versus Spurs, and he was the main threat the whole, throughout the whole game. And uh, I actually didn't really rate him too much, but then I, I actually he's one of the players who just doesn't stand out till you actually watch him. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so I'd be a bit wary of him, but I think if if Long does that, he will stretch us. But um, I, I could also see it being a scruffy affair. I don't know now. I could see someone like James McLean leaving one in for the for the Seamus Coleman stuff that happens. I could see that happening because he he likes to get um let his emotions get the better of him sometimes and he'll go flying into challenges. But I think he will be up for it. He'll be another one who 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 potentially might score, and he's had a decent like scoring record this campaign. Uh, I know he scored against. Um, he scored out in Austria as well. Uh, he doesn't normally do that now, but he started to step up his game in terms of scoring goals for Ireland. Um, if Hulahan even plays, he seems to be our main um, bit of flair. You know, he's the only one in the squad who seems to have a bit of creativity. And when he doesn't play, he likes to play Brady in that hole. You know, I'm just uh, like, who are you guys most afraid of on our team? Like, who 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 would you be fearing? Yeah. I have a general fear, just just completely. Yeah, yeah. It's just it is one complete fear of it's all going to go terribly, yeah. terribly wrong. That's it's. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean Brady, I think is one of the big ones for me, um, and Murphy, uh, O'Dada, who I've mentioned. Um, see, I, I I understand when when we came to you guys, you had O'Shea and you had Keo as your centre halves, so I totally understand why basically O'Neill parked you on the edge of the area. And said, we're going to defend deep. We're going to allow no space in behind those two because that's like oil tankers turning, isn't it? You yeah. know. Hey, uh, but now who, who's it likely to be tomorrow? It's going to be it's a uh, Duffy and Clark. Duffy and Clark, exactly. So you got a little bit more pace there, haven't you? And so, so Christian Ward and yeah. So I, I think you'll play a little bit further up the pitch. I'm expecting it to be a little bit scruffy as well. I think it'll be oh, like a kind of British derby type affair, but not a. You know, not a Liverpool, Manchester United, maybe more of a, you know. It wouldn't battle. be. It wouldn't be a British affair. We're not British. That's that's right. And Chris Coleman got pulled up on that again in the press conference. Sorry, today. sorry, and Clinton Morrison. I mean, is there? <laughs> he says backpedaling quickly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. you know, you know <laughs> the players know each other. It's that kind of Premier League style. Yeah, yeah. So, no, I got you. If me, I didn't correct me. you, I would have got abused. It's going to be hard tackling, uh, you know. It's going to be com- they're going to be yeah. committed, and you know, there's going to be no not much fancy fudging around on the ball. And you know, it's, it's going to be it's going to be huge. Discipline's going to be massive, and we've got so yeah. many players on yellow cards as well. You know, if, if anybody we if anybody thinks ahead to the playoffs, you know, we've got we've got on Joe uh, we've got eight players, eight players on the yellow players. cards. Ben so. Davis, well, we need really Scotland to lose for <laughs> the playoffs. Is that I was going to say so. For us, you know, they've been doing the calculations. What actually are they for Ireland? Because um, well, it, we need we, we need Scotland basically not to win now. That's right. basically, that's basically what we need. Yeah, I was reading uh, I was reading um, uh, 
the uh, good old Western Mail here uh, today, um, and uh, so the connotations for us at one point it could even come down to yeah, uh, disciplinary record yeah. if we end up level on points uh, um, yeah. with uh, Croatia because they 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 are less, less dirty than us apparently. Because you guys could still win the group as well. Right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, if, that's the other if, thing. if Georgia if Georgia beat Serbia and we beat you, then we we go top. Yeah, yeah. miracles. So, it's incredible. It's incredible. There's so much to play for. Yeah, yeah, but that's, that's, I think there'll be blood, sweat, and tears left uh, in this game. I mean, they're, they're both going to be up for it. I think they both realise now that, like, pretty much throughout the group, we both fucked up at different points. You know, um, as soon as Coleman went out, we just spiraled down. As, really? soon, as soon as he went out, like, not a lot of people so, realised how vital he was. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> not a lot of people knew, like knew how vital he was. Like. Cyrus Christie is very, very like suspect def- defensively. Like, I get paranoid like looking at him when anybody runs against him. Even the Moldovan defense there the other night, and even like Darren Randolph did have to make a few saves the other night. And people don't give him enough credit. I, I think I think he's a very good keeper for for Ireland. He might not be the best for West Ham, but when he puts on an Ireland top, he never he never lets us down. Like he made one mistake once against Uruguay, and everyone kind of seems to hang him out to dry for that. But that was a friendly, so. We're, we're massive Georgian fans now, aren't we? Oh, huge, 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 huge Georgian fans. Uh, oh, we, we were as well on, on Friday. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's all right. That, that's that's fine. Um, I mean, after that, I mean, Tbilisi was an amazing place to go. Yeah, visit. it was. And great. we couldn't understand how Georgia haven't actually done better in this group. No. They are capable. They're a decent side, aren't they? They, really they nice should have beaten us in, in Tbilisi. Yeah, they should have beaten us. Um, um, and we should have lost at home to them. They, yeah, yeah. You know, we played terrible second half and they pulled us apart. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I don't think that Serbia-Georgia game is a foregone conclusion at no, all. No, we, we think that if, uh, because Serbia fans are not going to be happy after after the Austria after the Austria defeat, and the, the atmosphere in that stadium when we were there, tough, it? it was a tremendous atmosphere. And like a good old good old fashioned proper Eastern Bloc, uh, Eastern European stadium, is like a big ball, but the noise is amazing. Yeah. yeah. And they, if they if they don't start, uh, if they're not all over them in like the first 20, 30 minutes, that's going to be a turn. horrible. That's going to be a yeah. horrible place for a Serbian player to be. So come on, Georgia. <laughs> Massive yeah. fans right now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean. It's just one of those. You got to, you, you can't. You'd like, I wouldn't put. I wouldn't be putting any bets on it. No, no. I, I, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, I, we pretty. I think everybody pretty much given the group up for Serbia, haven't they? They were. Like, you should have seen the celebrations when uh, when Austria won three two. Though you know, it was already on a bit of a buzz, and then there's this whole street in in Georgia, in Tbilisi, where there's bars all lined down the side. And yeah, that just went up, didn't it? As soon as Austria won three two, there were beer, beer and Welshmen <laughs> everywhere. It was just just a sea, it was a mess. And were they all wearing? Were they all wearing that yellow and green cap? The bucket hats. Yeah, the bucket hats. The, the, the yeah, bucket hats. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the spray fifty eight bucket hats. Yeah, we. Um, the guy that designed those, or the, the guy that made the, the original ones, we know him quite well, and he just seems to spend most of his life soundly pissed when he, whenever it comes to Wales. But somehow, has managed to pump out this merchandise, which is like really yeah. sort of. Brilliant fan, uh, fan cult, retro yeah. cult stuff. It's it's uh, because there, there there wasn't actually any. Uh, you, you basically you you're a, a full kit tosser uh, or a Wales or you wear a Welsh shirt <laughs> and that's it. There's nothing. Yeah. There's nothing. You know. There was nothing to the side of yeah, that. Yeah. So Tim he, Williams came along. He developed this this yeah. nice little sideline and sort of the stuff that you you don't mind being seen in the street with and yeah. you know. But it was. So yeah, yeah, there would be many, many bucket hats of many varying colours, but um, I, ha- I had a few, I had a few friends that were over for the Dublin game. I stayed with them and they had their hats on. And I was just like, yeah, looking good, lads. <laughs> we do. We, we never really left the nineties. No, we yeah. don't. No, we don't. we're still what, cleaning up. <laughs> what, what, what do you, What do you think the the final uh, score would be? Honestly, God. I can't. I can't see there being more than a goal in it. No, I can't either. Um, for me, it's going to be, we've kept three clean sheets, uh, so I'm going to go 1-0 Wales, and I'm going to say it's going to be an Aaron Ramsey penalty. He'd see, when we were talking about players that we'd fear, he'd probably be the one that we'd be fearing. Well, the one that... It's an obvious, I, obvious choice, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, the one, the one I'm picking on is the one that I hope that everybody uh, ignores that they haven't done their homework properly, but uh, they, he, 
done. They probably will have done now after yeah. uh, after Georgia and, Tom and, and Tom Lawrence's. Yeah, because John, what George didn't realise is that Tom Lawrence specialises in goals from just outside the area. He, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this out, but I've been thinking Tom Lawrence. You have, you have. This, this is he's mentioned it once or twice. Uh, Lawrence is a big Tom, uh, Tom Lawrence fan, and uh, just a, just not just his namesake. Finally, it came. Finally, <laughs> it's, it's been a few years. Because he got he got overshadowed by Ben Woodburn, you know. He tried his heart out against Austria, then Ben Woodburn came on, dropped the shoulder, smashed one in from distance, and everybody all of a sudden everybody wanted you know Ben Woodburn to be their son or boyfriend or whatever. It was it just there was a lot of love for him. And then he crosses one in for Hal Robson Carno against Moldova, and all of a sudden this boy can do no wrong. Little Tom Lawrence on the side goes, I, I can do that. I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> And then he showed it. And then he showed it, and he got it against yeah, Georgia. Right. And I think that's going to have a profound effect on him because we know that he can do that. Yeah. And Chris Coleman's always known that he can do that, and they've been waiting for him to do something like that. And I, I, I'm hoping that that's going to be a game changer for him. Well, he's going to be coming up against Cyrus Christie pretty much. So um, yeah. we, we don't want that. Now, what about yourself uh, in terms of the score, Louis? So, uh, score, uh, it's 2-1. Mm, Wales, two one Wales. I'm going. I am. It's going to be because you can't sit back. Yeah. You've got to go for this. Yeah. And I think, I think, I think that's that. I'll yeah. Play a bit more into our hands. Yes. Yeah, I think so a little bit. Yeah, okay. Um. But the first like, 20, 30 minutes. That's going to give us a good indication. It's. You know, I, I'm expecting it to be very, very cagey. But at some point, one or both sides are going to have to realise that if you want to be in this, we got to win it. So we're going to. Uh, yeah. We'll and your, your prediction. Your prediction? I'm going to stay positive and I'm going to go for a 2-1 Ireland away win. Away win? Well, you wouldn't be much of an Irish fan, no, Charlie, no. if you didn't. And your you? goal scorers? Um, I'm going to go, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say uh, Shane Long and uh, the Anders Drought and uh, Daryl Murphy. Um, I, I, or, uh, I, I think Robbie Bailey might, might get a free kick. He's well overdue a goal. But uh, I'm going to go 2-0. Uh, I'm going to go with Long and Murphy for now. What's it? Okay. All right, so uh, I think yeah. we we leave it at that. Then that's um that's great. Thanks very much for coming on the show, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll catch good. you again sometime. Hopefully. And uh, good luck with everything you're doing. It's uh you know it's great that you're out there doing it for the Irish fans and uh, and showing what they're all about. And uh, yeah, yeah, no, all power to the fan fans. TV. Fans TV right. Appreciate it, lads, and same to yourselves. Uh, I get the lads to like your page. All right, thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Thanks very much to the lads from. Eat, sleep, footy, repeat. Excellent. Cheers, guys. Right. Cheers, guys. Cheers, boys. Thanks very much. Nice one, Paul. Well done, mate. That's cracking. All right. I'm John Delaney, and you're watching Irish Football Fan TV.